Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Let's pray. Father, we bless you today. Thank you for your gift of understanding your truth. And your spirit today is guiding us into all truth as we follow his leading. And thank you for your word coming forth right now. It is removing every body. It's destroying every yoke right now. Thank you for your peace that flows like a stream even in our nation. Thank you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Now, yesterday we began to talk about holiness. What is holiness? What's this Bible concept of holiness? And then we're looking at Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. It says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Notice it said, this is your reasonable service service meaning it's on it's not unreasonable it's it's something that is expected of you and it's normal praise god so it's not you it's not something that you say wow i i was able to no no it's normal this is your reasonable thing you're supposed to do to the lord and i told you something the amplified version says in in let me read the amplified version of this thank you lord jesus romans Chapter 12, it says, I, uh, verse 1, amplified version. Now, this is the amplified classic. It says, I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, and beg of you, in view of all the mercies of God. Do you see that? In view of all the mercies of God. Now, why, why is he communicating like this? He is telling you, look, God is merciful. He is slow to anger. He is not quick to judge you. He is not quick to take revenge or take action against you. He is not. Now he is saying that in view of all the mercies of God, I am begging you. Begging you to do what? He says, to make a decisive dedication of your bodies presenting all your members and faculties as a living sacrifice holy meaning devoted consecrated well and well pleasing to god which is your reasonable rational intelligent service and spiritual worship did you see that he says it's your rational it's your intelligence. You see, we don't walk with God like zombies. You know, something like that. Everything God says, just do, just do. You know, something like that. whatever your man of God tells you, just do it. Don't ask any question, just do it. Nah, that's a big lie, praise God. Nah, you need to understand exactly what you're doing. See, and when God deals with us, He wants us to be rational in our thinking. Because, you see, you serve God with your mind. Now, we are spirit beings, don't get me wrong. We are spirit beings, and the Spirit of God is at work in us. But hey, let me tell you, our personal dedication to the Lord comes from our mind. So, it's not something that the Spirit of God is moving me. Oh, yeah, I don't, I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm just serving the Lord. No, that's not how it works. We see what the Spirit of God wants. See, the Spirit of God begins to call you. He begins to tell you, come in this direction. Come this way. See? And then you, you consider it and you tell yourself, you know what? I want to serve God with my life. Now, that's how it works. So, you make a conscious decision. He said here, he says, make, he says, make a decisive dedication. A decisive dedication. Make it. See? You tell yourself, this is what I'm going to do. 
with all my faculties intact, with all my mind, nobody, nobody knew any breath on me. I, I know exactly what I'm doing. Praise God. You know, someone said, I don't know, I don't know what that pastor did to me. I went to that church before you know what happened. I gave all the money in my account, and then you come out from the plane like, wonder, what did I just do? Now let me tell you something. Those kind of givings, truly, God doesn't accept it. He doesn't accept it. Yeah, he doesn't accept it. You don't give out of any influence. See, there are, that, there are times, I want you to get something here. The Holy Spirit will not come on you and make you give and then now leave you. And then I say, what did I just do? That's not the Holy Spirit, I'm telling you the truth. But you know what? This is how the Holy Spirit would help you. You come before him and say, Lord, this is what I want to do. I know it's the right thing to do, but I'm fighting my flesh. I'm fighting my understanding. Please, I need your strength. I need your help. This is what I want to do. Help me do it. And then the Holy Spirit can come on you. I've seen that happen many times. Then the Holy Spirit will come on you, empower you. You, you just feel a, a, a quickening. And then you do that thing. And when you're done, you're like, yeah, I did it. Praise <laughs> God. Yeah, I was able to do it. See, now that's what Paul meant when he says, I can do all things through Christ. Who what? Strengthens me. Now, Christ will not strengthen you to do things against your will. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, there are times he, he, he takes us into new things. He takes us into dimensions. See? And, and he shows us things. Now, in ministry, sometimes I see that happen. When you're ministering to people. You know, sometimes the Spirit of God will just, something you've never seen before, something you've never done before, no one has taught you to do it. He just tells you what to do in a particular situation. You're praying for someone, and then he tells you, you know, he, he can just say, rub the ankle, see. Maybe there's pain in the person's leg. He say, rub that ankle. Now, you don't know what you're doing at that moment. He just pick the ankle and, and you rub it and next thing the person is healed and then you, even you wonder what just happened here now that's because you are ministering and then he's a helper you already set your heart to minister to someone see then he steps in and begins to help you in the process but he is not going to come on you and make you start doing things and then you do things and then nah 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 and then you begin to I don't know, the past 30 minutes of my life, what have I been doing? What happened to me? That's not the Holy Spirit. You see, that's why when, when, when you remember the story of Ananias and Sapphira, now, what was their sin? Have you ever wondered? What did they do wrong? Now, people were giving their lands in church then. And then they will give their land. Now, how do they? How were they giving their land? They will be in service, worshiping God. And then suddenly, the Spirit of God will move on them, and and they will just come before the the congregation and say, "Hey, guys, I have two hectares of land in so and so place. I'm giving it to the Lord. Wow, you know, for the furtherance of the gospel. Wow, praise God. All right, go sell it and and bring the money to the church." All right, I'm going to do that. Now, that's what they were doing. They don't give the land documents to the church. No, they don't do that. They go sell it, and then they, they, they give it first. Then they go sell it and bring it to the church. Now, in the case of Ananias and Sapphira, they made their pledge already. They said, oh, our four hectares of land in so and so place, we are giving it to God. So they said, oh, praise God, praise God, go sell it. It's all right. Now, they went back, sold it, and then they saw how much the money was. And like, whoa, no, we can't give all this money to church. <laughs> you know, people are that way. We can't. Ah, no, no, no. He sat down with his wife and said, nah, 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 we can't. So what do we do? You know what? Let's split it. This part we'll give. This part we'll keep. So they kept it. And then they got there. And then they handed it over. And Peter asked them, is this all you sold the land for? So yeah, yeah, you know, you know, price of land these days have, um, you know. And Peter said, hey, why have you decided to lie against the Holy Spirit? Now, why did Peter use those words? Because when, when they brought it, normally he wouldn't have asked. But the Holy Spirit who sees all things, 
saw them, you know, I just want to imagine how, you know, in, in some of our churches, you dance to the front to give your offering, you know. Now, now that's a thing, maybe whatever service it was then. And then they, they just danced, and, and Ananias came first, you know, and he was just dancing and dancing, and he dropped it. And then the Holy Spirit said, hey, this guy is doing something wrong. And Peter was like, what's he doing wrong? He said, that's not what he gave. Peter said, how? He said, ask him. Is that all he sold the land for? And then Peter spoke and said, hey, excuse me. Is that all you sold the land for? He said, yes. Now, when he said yes, Peter, walking by the Spirit of God, is hearing something different in his heart. Because the Lord is saying, no, 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 that's a lie. So Peter said, hey, you, are you sure this is all you sold the land for? He said, yes, that's all I sold the land for. And Peter said, why are you lying against the Holy Spirit? See? Now, he didn't know he was lying against the Holy Spirit. But Peter knew he was lying against the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the Holy Spirit was giving him a different witness from what he's saying. Now, as a minister, I, 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 I get to that place, you know, someone is telling you something, and then the Holy Spirit is telling you something. Now, I have, I have learned to handle such things. And in, in such things, what I do, I, I just quit whatever I was doing with that person. I said, okay, it's not a problem. Thank you. Why? Because you don't want to get into confrontation. And, and that's what happened. And that's why Ananias died. And his wife died also. Because they got into that place where the Holy Spirit will have to prove that he is right. Are you getting what I'm saying? And, and remember what Jesus said. He said, if you sin against the Holy Spirit, you will never be forgiven. So sometimes you don't get Now That's why, that's why God never loves us to get into strife. He never loves us to get into strife. How much more striving where he is concerned? So Peter asked him the question, this, Sir, when the land was yours, it was yours to do whatever you wanted to. It was yours to say, I want to give half of it. Oh, I want to give a portion of the land. It, nobody was forcing you to bring your land. You said you wanted to give your land. See, the moment you said you were giving that land, that land became holy to the Lord. So you have no right to go change your mind. Now, if, now imagine if, if they came after they sold the land and they came to Peter and said, Peter, um, after we sold the land, we decided to change our mind. And this is what we want to give to God now. Now, that would have been bad enough, but it wouldn't have cost them their lives. You understand what I'm saying? Peter would have advised them and said, no, if I'm the one, I would say, you know what? I think you better keep the land. And when you fully decide what you want to do, then you give it. It's because God is not begging. God is not a beggar. So don't let anybody, as a preacher of the gospel, don't let anybody treat you like a beggar. You are not a beggar. God has never sent you to go beg. So, so when you start acting and letting people treat you anyhow it grieves the spirit of god you know and there are people like that they promise to give you something you know they, as a pastor just, someone say oh oh i, I want to give something to to the church or to the ministry can you see me tomorrow by 4 p.m and then you get there tomorrow by 4 p.m the person is not around and then you call and call and call he's not answering the call he said oh you know what um you drop a message, please. I came like you said. And then, said, oh, so sorry. Something came up. Um, can you make it tomorrow? And then tomorrow you go again. And then something comes up. And he called me. Oh, sorry. You know what? Um, can we make it? No, don't go again. Don't go again. You see, I'm talking about holiness. Even you as a minister, you are holy unto the Lord. You don't move anyhow. You belong fully to the Lord. You don't do things anyhow. You don't let people treat you anyhow. See? Anything you want to do, allow the Spirit of God to guide you. That's how to present yourself as holy unto the Lord. You need to get permission from Him first before you do that thing you want to do. So Peter told him, when it was in your power, it was yours. Even after you sold the land, so why did you decide to lie? And then the Holy Spirit struck him dead there. See? 
I believe because he was lying against the Holy Spirit and he got to that place where the Holy Spirit have to prove okay let's prove who's telling the truth or not he does it you see that also in the book of Jeremiah praise God our time is up but we'll continue from here tomorrow God bless you step out today with joy in your heart because God is doing great things in your life bye bye